Unified Ed and Chattanooga 2.0 are both committed to ensuring uh, equity for all our young people in Hamilton County. Together we define equity as all students reaching their full potential by ensuring they have access to the resources and supports that meet their individual needs. In practice, equity will show itself in our work and in our policies and those that we support, as well as the conditions we enable and the coalitions we, we mobilize and the systems we seek to improve. We know that there are some schools in District 9 that are concentrated poverty of more than the student body is eligible for free and reduced lunch. Additionally, given the large size of our district, we know that rural communities can also be isolated from city center resources as well as opportunities. Historically, across our country and in our, and in our county, we have struggled to ensure uh, adequate racial and socioeconomic integration of our public schools, a strategy that research has shown to be effective for improving student outcomes. As a school board member, what specific strategies, Mr. Highlander, will you employ to ensure a plan is developed and implemented to fully integrate our public schools to ensure equity for all of our young people? Thanks, sir. I certainly believe in equity. I think it's very important that we have equity. I believe that every need, every child has specific and personal needs. They are so variant, it's unbelievable. But I believe most children and most parents want their children in a community school. Uh, quite often when, when my dad was working in inner city, the parents would not have cars and they'd have difficulty if the child was sick getting to them. I think community schools are very important, but also diversity and opportunities are important for every child. We need to look at our schools in this district have some of the highest pupil teacher ratios in the entire county. I think we what we on the school board did at Rivermont, which was a good performing school, and the majority of us voted to make Rivermont an open enrollment for ch children to come in from outside, and I'm very thankful that we did. It was the right thing to do. To that end, I volunteered and was accepted to be on the Equity Task Force. We have had one introductory meeting where we have our first work session on this Wednesday from 10 to 12, and I'm looking forward to that. I think we would be premature to list specific plans until we see what is recommended by the Equity Task Force. And then, and then the Equity Task Force will present what they're going to, and it will be voted on, it, and the magic number is five. It'll take five board members to vote any plan in. But I think we need to look and see what the Equity Task Force recommends, rather than, than this is just for me personally, everyone has a right to do what they think is correct, and we have First Amendment rights of free speech in this country, which I'm thankful for for each of my fellow board members. I personally would like to prefer to do things correctly rather than too fast. And so I want to be sure and see what the Equity Task Force that I'm serving on says first, and then evaluate that, do a careful evaluation, and see what's best for, the, for all the students in this county. Thank you so much. Mr. Anderson, as a school board member, what specific strategies will you employ to ensure a plan is developed and implemented to fully integrate our public schools to ensure equity for all of our young people. I believe we must work hand in hand with the equity, the chief equity officer and other school uh, connections in the school system to provide the needs that the teachers may have. Um, and I agree with you, Mr. Steve Hollander. Um, every student, every teacher, and every school in Hamilton County have different things that they need in order to make them successful. Um, but with that being said, I do support having more diversity in the schools. Um, diversity and inclusion is critical for success past schooling. When you're in the real world, being able to be well-rounded and understand cultures and different people's backgrounds, it helps you succeed, and research says that. Um, I also have a story that I would like to share. When I was in the military, um, you had to go to the basic training, and you had to be around people from different backgrounds, different races, uh, racial color, and things like that. Um, there, everyone there isn't the same, and everyone there doesn't have the same walk of life as you, but you still have to manage to work together as a team. And I feel if we strive to make our schools a little more diversitized with social economics and ethnic backgrounds, I feel like that will help our students thrive after they graduate. And 
I feel like I understand transportation is an issue for a lot of people and a lot of people feel that we may not understand how all that's going to work and trust me, I'm in the same boat as you. But there are, are some counties, for example, Louisville, Kentucky, that have done something like this, something like open enrollment, um, control, controlled choice, and it works. And I feel if we sat down together as a team and a school board team and kind of thought about that a little more, a little deeper, and remodeled our Hamilton County system like that, maybe things would change in the school system and we will see different outcomes when it comes to the poverty rates, the test scores, and things like that. Um, I understand freedom of speech is something that everyone in America has, but um, I think at times we have to watch what we say and remember that everyone doesn't believe the same thing that we believe in. Um, so don't go and say that you think that is okay and force everyone to think that segregated schools is okay because it's not. It's 2018. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Highlander, you'd like a, an opportunity to refer a vote. I'm not disagreeing in basically with what my friend, young friend says. What I am saying is I think that that some of the couple of school board members have been uh, faced a misinterpretation. And I think that mainly what they were saying, I have read very closely what their, what their statements were, and they were not, anyone that thinks that Mr. Smith is racially involved is foolish. Mr. Smith has raised 19 African American children in his home. I mean, he is very concerned. No one has spoken up for, uh, for, for African American and inner city children more than Joe Smith has. So we may disagree on something, but I very much appreciate the fact that he is involved in diversity. Both he and Ms. Thurman have, the way I read it, is not trying to be racist, they're trying to be economically practical. And so whether you agree or not with that, I, I think that there's a little misconception there I want to kind of straighten up. Thank you. Uh, we just have one, one minute uh, rebuttal. Okay. Um, just to clarify, I didn't say anything about racism or anything. I just said I feel that we can't be bearing of what we say um, in the public and expect everyone to agree with what we think. Um, and also, I do feel as the chairman of the board, um, if you were someone who were to agree with this, and you seem to do, um, I just would have liked as a student growing up into this county for you to have uh, represent the board a little bit better by publicly saying what she said tonight. I felt like that would have been a way more respectful way to um, handle the situation than the way it was. I feel like you still are, but I feel like uh, publicly it would have been nice for people to see both sides of the party and not just the one that was publicized.